Well, this intro is a little bit different than my normal intros. This is uh, an intro to a video that you're gonna see after I get done pontificating here at the beginning. Uh, a intro to a video that I prepared in conjunction with the Mega 65 team. The Mega 65 team was kind enough to reach out to me and say, hey, we've got this spot at the Mega 65 website, mega65.org, where we include a video, and we've always had this thought that we needed a video that introduced the Mega 65 to any new visitors to the mega65.org website. And they asked me if I wanted to do that video and maybe put a retro combs spin on it. So I thought about it, it took me about three seconds, and I said, yes, I would really like to be a part of that project. So we started out with a Google Doc, that was shared with me. We went through, we made some edits on the Google Doc. Uh, they had some requests that they wanted, some things that they wanted to see. And what I tried to do is take those items that they wanted, kind of create a script from that, add some things that I wanted to do to do to that, uh, or add to that video that would add some additional, you know, kind of flavor, but also start to begin to really brainstorm what, what imaging did I want to capture? What things did I want to share? shared that back with them. They added some things. It was this great kind of editing process. And, and you know, we need to remember, I'm in the United States, they're in Germany. So we're doing, this is an international production, folks. And it was just a blast to put that together. And so I got the script all done. We did the recording. And so we had a version one of the recording and I sent that back to them. So uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna save what happened next to after the video right now. I'm excited to share with you the video I prepared for the mega65.org website. So uh, hang around afterwards. We'll talk a little bit more about the video, but right now I think I need to toss it over to me so that you can see this about seven minute introduction to the mega65. So, hey me, tossing it over to you. Greetings, I'm Retro Combs. You may have seen my retro computing blog or my YouTube channel, but today I'm honored to tell you more about the Mega 65, a modern field programmable gate array or FPGA implementation of the never released Commodore 65 computer. Commodore designed the C65 to be the last great 8-bit computer and although never sold, Commodore released 200 C65s during a liquidation of their assets in the early 1990s. C65s are rare and expensive and have become a thing of legend and unobtainium in the Commodore retro computing community. In 2014, the Museum of Electronic Games and Art, or MEGA, explored an FPGA implementation of the C65. The winter of that same year, they met Paul Gardner Stephen, who was hard at work on his C64 accelerator project. Seeing similarities, they combined their talents and efforts to create a completely open source and modern version of the C65 called, you guessed it, the Mega 65. Excited users followed and contributed to the development of the Mega 65 software using a Digilent Nexus 4 FPGA development board. And at the end of November 2020, the Mega 65 team shipped developer kits to 100 lucky individuals. I was one of those 100 lucky individuals. I got it. It's on. It's on. Yay! In the spring of 2022, Mega 65 developers released the first 400 Mega 65s, marking the first time a C65 has been available since the 1990s. This modern recreation shares the same physical shape as its predecessor while mixing legacy and modern components to create a retro computer that feels refreshingly contemporary. If you want that retro experience, you can plug a joystick or mouse into one of the two nine pin DIN connectors for gaming or GEOS 65. Insert a C64 cartridge into the user port and use the built-in C64 mode to play games. Connect a vintage monitor to the VGA port. You can insert and use a three and a half inch floppy disk in the integrated physical drive or connect an original floppy drive unit into the IEC port. Modern users will appreciate an internal SD card and an external micro SD card to store ROM, disk image, music, and other files. 
An ethernet port is available to take your Mega 65 online, or you can use an HDMI port to connect to a modern display or television. Because the Mega 65 uses an FPGA with an expandable motherboard design, the user community can upgrade both the system software and add additional hardware. The open source nature of the Mega 65 allows users who want a dataset port, for instance, to design one and share their design with the community. Inside the Mega 65, the FPGA implements a 4502 8-bit processor running at either 1, 2, 3.5, or 40.5 megahertz, four SID chips, 384 kilobytes of fast RAM accessible to the VIC-4, which is backward compatible to the VIC-3 and VIC-2. It includes eight megabytes of hyper RAM, 32 kilobytes of color RAM, and I have to say, that's a lot of tech for an 8-bit computer. To put all of this 8-bit power at your fingertips and to program in either Basic 65 or Assembly, the Mega 65 includes a modern mechanical Cherry MX keyboard with traditional Commodore keys and Commodore layout. The top of the keys are double-shot injection molded with Petsky characters and color labels printed on the front of keys. I call this the best keyboard found on any Commodore computer. And here's a small list of what you can do right now with the Mega 65. Operate in Commodore 64 mode to play games or program in BASIC. Develop cores to emulate other Commodore systems such as a C64, Plus 4, C128, or even an Amiga. Develop cores to emulate non-Commodore computers such as a Game Boy. Look what we got here. <laughs> it's actually a Game Boy Color core. or ZX Spectrum. We have a new core available. On the slot two, we have a ZX Uno test one, and I boot this one up. Play Mega 65 specific games and demos, such as Hibernated One, Director's Cut, Showdown, Turrican, Tutter, Geek Slide, or Musical Balls. Get productive with a Mega 65 version of Geos. Or chill, or jam to some mod files using the mod player. That's just a taste of what you can do with the Mega 65. There's so much more you can do right now. And there's more to come as developers continue to get their hands on this wonderful computer. I hope this video has piqued your Mega 65 interest. If so, there's an entire community of users and developers waiting and ready to answer your questions. Join the community of owners, developers, and enthusiasts by visiting www.mega65.org. Link is in the video description below. If you're watching from the Mega 65 webpage, check out the top of the page. There you'll find links to the Mega 65 Discord, GitHub repository, and Forum 64 discussions. The page also includes information to order and reserve your very own Mega 65. Oh, and be sure to check out my own Mega 65 resource page at retrocombs.com slash Mega 65, where I've included all my Mega 65 content and a list of additional websites to get you started. I can't wait to see you in the Mega 65 Discord. Be sure to tag me using Retrocombs to let me know that you have joined. At this time, Retrocombs out. So I hope you enjoyed that little introduction. I promised you a little bit more information, so let me pick up where I left off. Version 2 was interesting. I had a version 1 that I had created, and this is why I need an editor. And I've always known that. I've, I've written some books in the past and editors save your bacon. Let me just put that, uh, put that out there. I am my own world's worst editor. So the, the guys over at the Mega 65 team 
pick my version one apart. I wouldn't say they picked it apart. They found some things that we really needed to change that were either technical errors or content errors. So we made those changes and I sent them a version two. So what you just saw was the version two. Version one did, again, had some errors in it. So I will not be sharing that version with anybody. So what's going to happen with it? Well, this version is going to stay live. This version with these bookends, the beginning bookend and the end bookend, right? They kind of squeeze it together. But the folks over at Mega65, what they're going to do is post the video without the bookends to their YouTube page. They're going to unlist it so that it's not searchable. And then that will be posted on their website where new visitors to the website can watch this introduction video to the Mega65. I will leave this copy here. This is my copy to share more broadly. But the goal is, if you're watching here, we want you over there at the Mega65.org website too. So make sure you go over there and visit. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel, do all that stuff down at the bottom. But more importantly, tell me what you thought about the video. Leave some comments below to let me know what you thought about our introductory video. Sure, there's probably some things in hindsight that maybe I would change. There's probably some things that the guys would change. But you know, with a with a, uh, a long distance across the pond trying to collaborate on this, it does make it difficult for kind of some one-on-one -on -one and, and to really dig into it. But if we were to do a version three, let's say, what would you think we should have included? Now, again, we tried to keep it around. They wanted three to five minutes. I went to seven minutes. I'm an overachiever. What can I say? But what could we have done better? Okay. So I'd love to hear those comments or read those comments down below. Got it? Okay. So I, I think I've already retro combed out once and should I do it? Yes, I'm going to do it again. So at this time, Retro Combs out. Thanks for watching this bookend edition of the Mega 65 intro video. By the way, check out these videos. They're coming up right now.